Hey guys, it's Keto Kelly, just getting her done. Sitting outside in the beautiful sweltering heat of Virginia. Um, thank goodness I have this. We uh, just put chemicals in it yesterday, so I need to let it run for a little bit before I get in. It's a salt water pool, so we had to put like 300 pounds of salt in it to get the salt water generator going. Just had the liner replaced in it, so. Anyway, just wanted to come in and do a quick update. I was looking back when I had started keto, and um, I think I'm like 58 weeks keto. I started on May the 25th of 2015. 2015? Yes, 2015. And I am just over a year. I have lost 67 pounds. I started at, I think, 280. I had a tumor discovered on my stomach in October of 2014. Um, and those of you who um, don't follow my channel know that I've gone through quite a bit to get this tumor removed. I initially was supposed to have the vertical sleep gastrectomy, which is the reason that I follow a lot of VSGers. Um, and then it was supposed to be an RNY. And then it was supposed to be total stomach removal. Just a lot of things, which ended up happening was only 10% of my stomach was removed. And uh, the oncology surgeon had said the reason for that was that the stomach actually looked pretty good and that only some of the fat surrounding the stomach and 10% of the stomach needed to be removed. And I attribute the reason the stomach looked so good was because of keto. I also do keto because of the cancer. So, which so far has worked for me. And um, I'm due to get another CAT scan on the 22nd of July just to see if I'm still clear. That being said, uh, I feel fantastic. Um, I attribute a lot of uh, my stalls, which I've had probably three stalls throughout the year, um, this last one being the longest that I've had, about two and a half months. And I think what it is is hormonal and um, retaining a lot of fluid. Uh, anybody who knows when you retain fluid, you can feel it in your fingers and in your, you know, your ankles and your feet and your clothes are fitting a little snug and it's just, you can feel the fluid. And that's what I did. I felt, I felt a lot of the fluid, but also with, um, there's a lot of really big bees flying around because I have like this huge thing of like wildflower flowers behind me and they are flying by like kamikazes. Let's hope they just, ooh, I just, <laughs> uh, let's hope they stay away from me. Anyway, I digress. Um, what the hell was I saying? Anyway. Oh yeah, um, I think a lot of my issues for my stalls have been, oh is that lighting terrible, have been um, hormonal. Uh, I'm in my mid-40s and I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm getting ready to go into the beginning stages of menopause. And I'm not, I don't. I don't want to go on any kind of hormonal treatments because I believe that that keto can help with the hormones. I mean, the Healthful Pursuit, um, Leanne, always talks about regulating hormones with keto, and um, I'm going to do my best to try to take care of that um, through keto. Um, if it gets to the point where I need to do some type of hormone treatment, then I will. But as far as weight loss goes, um, right now that's not on the top of my list as far as doing the keto. For me, keto is 
let's just say I'm using it for my health as far as the cancer goes. Um, it has been proven that keto does help with cancer, certain cancers, because cancer does feed off glucose and sugars. And when you cut it completely out, the cancer has nothing to feed on. So, so far it's working for me and that's my primary um, goal for the keto lifestyle. Um, the weight loss is great because I needed to lose weight and, and this is going to be my biggest issue and ladies we all know that I mean I've seen a lot of men lose the weight oh this is an issue too but you don't see a lot of the men with the that's got to be hormone driven as well and everybody that I've watched that has um, the saggy skin issues has always been arms arms has always been my my biggest issue I don't like to wear uh, really short sleeve shirts I don't like to wear tanks I don't like to wear any of that stuff that shows my arms if I could just get any surgery right now it would be my arms I mean you can hide a lot of other things under clothing but I mean you can only wear long sleeve shirts for so long especially in a place like this it's so hot here so for me the weight loss has been great and I think even with the stalls you can still feel in your clothing because you're gonna lose inches weight loss doesn't always equal uh, a number on the scale sometimes it does equal inches lost um, fat will take up more space than say fluid because when you lose fat around your muscles it is replaced with fluid and the body will hold the fluid but it will not take up as much space so that's a, you know a lesson learned for people who who are getting frustrated with the scale if it's not moving you know sometimes you just need to judge by the feel of your clothes or measure some people measure I've measured from the beginning I haven't measured lately I probably should but and I haven't, um, well, I'll say this. There are days that I feel like when I'm walking, I feel lighter. There are days where I feel really heavy and weighed down and bloated. Um, and that could be fluid retention. But I'm trying to think what video I just watched. Somebody was talking about body dysmorphia. Um, who the hell was I watching? Meg. I hadn't seen Meg in a while, and it was good to watch her video and talking about um, body dysmorphia, and and that's a it's a real thing, because even though I've lost sixty seven pounds, I can look in the mirror and still still see that sixty seven pounds on me, and when I lost a hundred pounds, you know. 10 years ago and got down to about 167 I could still see the 267 pound person in the mirror it's it's a real mind game to try to to look past what you're seeing in the mirror that that it's real <clears throat> so do you hear that I have a bush right over there that has baby birds in it <laughs> And they are peeping. They're hungry, I guess. Um, so, you know, it's um, it's a good thing to um, cut carbs as far as health goes, because sugar and carbs are are very inflammatory. Um, I will admit that this, like a couple of weeks ago. I just, I was so frustrated with nothing happening that I, I sabotaged myself. I had chips. I had Chinese food, which is loaded with sugar. I had things that I hadn't eaten in a very long time. And the problem with that is that I, I, I really enjoyed it. But there was a point in my life where I could, I could walk away from it. And I guess I had gotten where I was like what am I doing this for 
if, if I'm not going to lose weight, what am I doing this for? And I should have looked back to, at my other video to see where the scale was then because I know just two weeks ago, I, the scale had jumped to 219. And my lowest, I had gotten down to 212, I think. And that's seven pounds all because of sugar now I know it wasn't it wasn't fat because there's no way you can you know put fat on like that but it was total inflammation from adding that that crap back into my system and some maybe have been fat I don't know but when I got on the scale it I I had actually had a conversation with myself, as crazy as it sounds, I had a conversation with myself, said, Kelly, you can't, you can't eat this crap. This is the kind of crap that got you to where you were a year ago. What are you doing? You know what causes the weight gain. You know where you go wrong as far as eating the things that you're, you shouldn't eat. And I just had to, I had to stop. And I jumped back on, because I knew at that point that I was probably out of ketosis. I had jumped back on and did what I needed to do. And this morning, I'm back down to 212. It works for me. It may not work for everybody, but it definitely works for me. Because I know my weight gain comes from carbs and sugars. And not so much sugars in candies. My weakness is of pastas and potatoes and rice and those high carby veggies and fruit. Those are the things that I, I just can't have. And Gina, from Gina and Spades, you know exactly what you need to do and I know you will do it. Don't get down on yourself. Shit happens. And sometimes... Our trains get a little off course, but we know what we need to do, get back on it, and I have every confidence that you will do that. Um, I didn't do a video a couple weeks ago because when my husband and I were out here clearing our backyard, I get into some poison sumac and was down for the count for about a week and a half. That stuff had me sick, right sick. And it's finally starting to clear up. I got some on my legs between my face. It was awful, awful, awful. Poison sumac is terrible. Um, so that's what held me from doing a video a couple weeks ago. But I'm back on track. I'm getting her done. I'm just getting her done. I have to do this for me. I have to. For my health. For my weight loss. And hopefully this coming Friday I'll be down under 212. I'm not going to say it because my weight loss is a, a crapshoot at this point. But I feel good. Because when I ate the carbs I felt like crap. And I knew why. So anyway. Um, take care everybody. Um, I still haven't done my Alfredo recipe yet. And I'm 13 and a half minutes in. So. Uh, I'm going to do that, but the sumac had me down for the count for a while. So whenever I get around to doing it, I promise I'll do a video. All right, love you guys. Take care, and I'll talk to you soon.